Hello, Ima Castillo. Thank you for coming on the Jury Quest Show. How are you today? I'm great, Chris, and delighted to be here. Thank you so much. Ima, today we're talking about this wonderful book, which is written by John Perry. Can you tell us about it, please? It is. It's a, it's, it's, it's a fabulous story. It's a book written in French. It's a novel, Enfant et l'eau d'une vase clos. And it's really about, uh, you can see there the picture of the bird yes. uh, hatching out of the cage. And it's about a young man who grew up in the Democratic Republic of Congo. It's about his life's journey, his sister's life's journey. Um, he uh, he um, grew up at a time when Congo was facing its, ind it, it, its independence and its own many political issues. And uh, indeed, both he and his sister had many issues that they needed to confront. They came from a broken home. Wow. Uh, it, it's his journey through life. It's his sister's journey through life uh, until in the end he did, I think, manage to hatch himself out of the of the egg and take his place in <laughs> in, 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 in the world. But it's a it's it's a lovely story. Um I think it gives wonderful insight into into life in the in, in, in the DRC. And also I think what I found really lovely about this book was just even some of the uh, descriptions about the landscape, the uh, the way of living of the people, because you got a real sense of that from sure. the book. Mm. Good. You know, like the book himself is more like it's in a French way of how you read a book. Uh, we look at all the areas where uh, the book is being written, be inspired. How how did it come about him be able to kind of put this a concept into one or full package? Yeah, I think it's uh, it, 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 it's quite an amazing story, and Jean Pierre is quite an amazing person. Jean Pierre qualified uh, as a vet, um, and I think he. Uh, he had he, he himself had quite a difficult life. I'm not sure it's completely autobiographical the story, mm. but I think that there are certain autobiographical elements. Uh, and one of the, the the keys to the book is is that education was so important in his life, and he managed to Jean Pierre himself managed to qualify in the uh, as a vet, and indeed so did our hero in the book managed to qualify as a vet. Jean Pierre came to Ireland back in. Um, in the mid 1990s wow. and unfortunately his qualifications weren't recognized here and that was a major problem and that's where we first came across Jean-Pierre mm. um, when he was uh, saying the unfairness and the inequality of it that people who came from the African continent with really good qualifications and didn't have those qualifications mm. uh, recognized um, and unfortunately that situation for Jean-Pierre wasn't resolved but I suppose uh, the veterinary world's loss was Ireland's gain and I yes. think that's uh, Jean-Pierre himself said Ireland lost so much by not allowing him to contribute to the whole veterinary medicine field mm. but he contributed so much in so many other ways because it made it inspired him to go off and set up Integrating Ireland mm. uh, to actually harness the abilities and the capabilities of the African diaspora and to understand the importance of trying to be an advocate for the African community and particularly then to try and link up with what's happening uh, back at home and indeed the DRC still has many issues that need to be confronted and I think that Jean-Pierre is somebody that has actually tried to, to strengthen the links and uh, strengthen the resolve between uh, people from, well between I, I think Africa. the African community True. but particularly people from the Congo and uh, people um, and, uh, and, and uh, working with the people in the DRC as well. Yes. And I think that that's something that is hugely important. And Jean-Pierre is somebody who I would uh, maybe term somebody who, who kind of offers that kind of bridge mm. between uh, Ireland and the African the continent country. and really has so much to contribute. And I think that in some ways he's, 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 he's like the bird. I think he was able to <laughs> achieve That's his really true potential. True. Yes. But you get to see some of the hardships. Mm. And yet when I read it, because I, I refer to just the way of life, the kind of the the farming background, the very simple lifestyles of many of the people uh, in the Congo. And it was very resonant hmm. of uh, an earlier Ireland, you know, back in the 1950s. 90s, yeah. you know. I, I wonder and myself. Yeah, you know? yeah, no, it was. It was really resonant of the kind of, um, of, the kind of rural lifestyle um, that people would have had in the 1950s and even the 1960s. I'm not originally from Dublin and, you know, mm. like a lot of this, uh, the, 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 the stories here about the young people, you know, the... Uh, being raised by their grandmother, then the kind of the the journey to the big city to, That's true. Uh, you know, like there were there there was so much in it. I I think that uh, 
there are so many parallels between Ireland mm. and uh, the African, African continent. Place. And this book really drew some of those parallels out for me. Mm. Let's talk a little bit about uh, what struck my head as well. You're talking about the integration between, um, between when his book came out, when John Perry said try to want to, you know, uh, put more of himself into the uh, vetting of the uh, poetry side of it. Um, what, was there any reason why he was not uh, recognized based on his qualification? Or is it because he's from Africa? Or why, why was that really struck there? Because for me, personally, I feel when you're in a society where it's not belongs to you, you should be contributing to the society, not to just take or give back the society. Why was there a big change in that area? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that the, 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 this is a big issue that has to be addressed, not just by the Irish government, but I think by the EU in general, that there has to be a transfer of qualifications and it's something that we need to work towards. Mm. But when Jean-Pierre arrived here, uh, there were no structures in place for recognising the qualifications that he uh, that he held. Now, I think that uh, it's moved on somewhat from there, and I know that uh, there are people who come from Africa and who can go through a process of having their qualifications recognised, but it is very difficult, and I think that that's an area that the EU and the Irish government need to uh, need, 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 really need to have a look at and examine. Yeah. Because there are so many people who are coming who have such wonderful skills, skills that are skills that Europe as a continent actually need mm. uh, and it's uh, it's really terrible sometimes when you see that people for various different reasons be it of, for reasons of um, the uh, the the, um, the legislation in terms of when people can work and the type of residence they have or whether it's in terms of the um, the qualifications uh, but people are coming they're very willing to, to to work they want to work they want to make a really strong contribution sure. to Irish society sure. and I think that uh, where, uh, where, where possible at all we should really be encouraging this because people coming to Ireland they're generating economic activity that's true and that's it's, really important uh, and it, 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 it's really important and when Ireland is in recession I think that that's what we need is we need that kind of um, we need we need that kind of innovation we need the ideas and that's something that I've always felt really strongly about that new cultures people from different cultures people from different continents they bring a kind of a new type of energy they bring hmm. new ideas they bring innovation they yes. They bring it a, a different way of looking at things. At, at, at least something that can change the society. society, society. It is, yeah. For good, you know, like um, people will come in and say, okay, well, I'm in this country for many years. I'm qualified in this level. I'm qualified, but fortunately, I cannot. Mm. But I think people have to keep saying as well, probably because they don't really believe in some of this qualification that they're actually bringing in to say, okay, I'm qualified to, to do these things. Do you not think that could be one of the reasons why this is really disbelief in terms of them accepting all of this qual qualification? Yeah, I well, I, I think that there are a huge number of problems at a, at a you know at a, at a governmental level about getting mm -hmm. the qualifications accepted. But I think that uh, from the people who I have met and people I've met in in professional capacities as well, I know that. Uh, and, uh, those people have received as good an education as you could receive in many European uh, institutions. And I think that it is really incumbent on us to resolve this issue mm. and to be able to find a very simple mechanism. Um, because we're, we've worked on that, and it took a long time to do that within, within the EU, whereby you, know, you have this European credit transfer system now, so that if somebody qualifies from an Irish university, uh, they can... It, it's portable, they can carry it to Germany or Holland or where, sure. wherever because there's a kind of a standardisation of qualifications. And I think that what we need to do, uh, and Europe has a, very much a role in developing education in, in the African continent that can say we can recognise these qualifications and then people are portable and they have that kind of mobility that wherever they bring their qualifications, they are uh, they are valid in any country in the EU. And that's something that I think we need to work towards, as I say, not just from an Irish perspective, but from a European from perspective. perspective. Yeah, you have to kind of take it above more, yeah. you know, more, yeah. more about it. Now, let's look at a little bit more on the diaspora of Africa at the moment. How can Africa diaspora help to develop economic cautious links between Ireland and uh, other countries of origin, for example, yeah. Africa? 
Well, I think that uh, the African diaspora, I think, is starting to take a leaf out of how the Irish diaspora actually uh, managed this. And if you have a look at uh, the success of the Irish diaspora in so many countries, like Ireland is a, a very small country. True. Um, and yet at the same time with a diaspora of somewhere between 70 and 80 million people, you can, uh, there are various reports of, of figures, but it's an, it's an absolutely massive diaspora. Uh, I think what's, what, what, what is important important is, is that uh, both the African diaspora here in Ireland and the African um, people in uh, back, back in Africa yes. do not just see the diaspora in terms of financial transfers, okay. whereas the financial transfers are very, very useful. And I know that in, over, in, in Irish history, financial transfers that came back to Ireland from America or from the UK or wherever, Canada, yes. Australia, where Irish people um, went, those financial transfers were hugely important to the development of Ireland. Mm -hmm. But I think that it's, 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 it has to be more than just the financial transfers. It's that kind of a bridge that people are providing because they are providing the, they're providing information flows because people are seeing opportunities. There's a huge True. African community living here in Ireland. Definitely. And I think yes. that the African community who are living here are knowing and understanding what, what Irish people need, what, what that African, African community needs. who are living here in Ireland need. And they can get ideas and they can say, you know, we don't have them, we don't have these. They can communicate so that they can, they can send the information back. But they can build up these links that are based on trust because they're based on blood relationships. True. They're based on, on, on strong friendships. So people say, well, I know this guy now, he's reliable. So if he's saying there's opportunities in Ireland, uh, then maybe we should listen to him. Um, they can try and influence political thinking as well so that they can ensure that there are more trade missions go to, uh, go, go, go to Africa and that trade missions from Africa are received so, very yeah. well too. So there are various different ways in which the African diaspora can organise themselves. But as I say, I think it, I think it is important that there is an organisation of the African diaspora to see what can we do mm. that will feed back into um, the African continent in general, and that will be good. And that brings about the uh, Akidwa and the Waswasasha. Look, looking at the work of those organizations, how would you describe your activity? Because you're fully emotional about it. Yeah, I, well, I, I think one of, the, um, one of the areas of the African diaspora that has really impressed me is the work particularly of African women and uh, how they are looking at asserting their independence and taking control. And they're doing it here in Ireland, but they're also looking back to Africa and seeing what's happening there as well. Mm. And Akidwa, I first came across Akidwa when I was Lord Mayor of Dublin, and we did a presentation of certificates and African women who had done uh, a, a programme in women's health. And you could see the awareness that that created uh, about women's health issues around women's reproductive issues. Mm. Uh, and I think that uh, arising from a lot of those issues that have been discussed here, what African women are now doing is, is that they're looking at some of those issues and they're challenging uh, some of the ideas and they're bringing their ideas uh, back to Africa mm. and they're helping women assert themselves, knowing and understanding the importance of women uh, in particularly to the the African economy. I think women are just so central to the African economy mm. in, in, in all different kinds of ways. Uh, and I think that African women are seeing how Irish women have challenged many of the ideas though around the role of women. Yes. And they are able to actually hmm. develop capacity in women. They're training women. They're developing. Um, they're, they're developing programs. But importantly, they're bringing this back to Africa, and they're keeping in touch with the women who are on the ground in Africa. As what well. about the Irish women here? How would you kind of, you know, by what you're saying, how would you kind of pull the African women and the Irish women in terms of collaboration, working to together in terms of what's we see in society today. How would you put that? Con yeah, I, I, well, I, I think that, you know, in terms of some of the issues that have come up, I think that there's been huge cooperation between Irish women and a lot of solidarity between Irish women 
and uh, and 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 African women and like in 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 the past, say something like an issue like gender based violence was not yeah. an issue that you could really discuss very well sure. in Ireland. Yeah. Uh, but I think Irish women are really be, be, be beginning to say, you know, that uh, w women have rights that they, you know, that this is a human rights issue that they shouldn't have to stay in abusive relationships. Sure. And I've seen some very powerful African women be it on the theme of female genital mutilation, be it on the subject of uh, forced marriages, mm -hmm. uh, or be it just on the basis of gender-based violence. And I've seen African women say, we have to challenge uh, we, we we have to challenge these uh, the, 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 these issues. We have to to challenge African women to confront these issues. But we have to be able to say to to, to women, there is a way of actually dealing with these issues. And uh, women uh, are th th these issues, and particularly issues of gender based violence, are very much human rights issues. And they can bring those human rights issues. Uh, to the African women here in Ireland, but importantly, organisations like Wetsasia, I think, are going back to Africa and they're looking at, uh, it's, it's not just in relation to women, I think it's in relation to all human rights issues, and they are looking at that and they are bringing that back home. And I think that that's being done in cooperation with Irish women here, and it's really powerful. Um, do you don't think, by what you're saying, which is good, uh, by the women all doing this year, it's great because yeah, the law is there. People are guided through the whole process. But looking back at Africa, do you not think that the Western should put more pressure on governments, you know, to be able to to kind of make sure that these issues, not just only being voiced out over here, but the activity should be done over there? Because majority of times, everything can be organised here perfectly, done the, the right way. But getting back to Africa could be a different story. So what happens outside here? That's another story. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that that's something that is very important, and I think that it is something that 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 is important in terms of uh, in terms of Western governments. But we saw there recently. I think that the the visit of Barack o o Obama recently to Africa was hugely was hugely hugely powerful, and I think that he he did actually raise issues such as LGBT rights. Um, which is, a, you know, again, an issue that 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 can be difficult for Africans to grapple with, and in many ways, I think again, we in Ireland can relate to that because, like, Ireland only decriminalised homosexuality yes. um, in the nineteen nineties, hmm. uh, and uh, and now look at like at one stage the the, the 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 pride parade in Dublin, we had hardly anybody marching on that, <laughs> and people were afraid to come out. True. And now, if, if if you saw pride parade. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just uh, a, a few weeks ago in yes. Dublin, and it was one of I I I think and Dublin and Dubliners and Irish people were so proud mm. that we are the first country in Europe to vote for marriage equality, mm -hmm. uh, and that we have um, and that we have such a, a, a vibrant LGBT community who can come out, who can march on the streets of Dublin, and we have one of the largest pride parades in Europe. Mm. But. Ireland has undergone a journey, so I think that what we have to do is, is that we have to understand how Africa can undertake that journey. Let's go back a little bit on the book. Um, if our viewers are home tuning in to watch the show right now and they want to get a book, where back can they go find it? They can get the book on from International Books on Wexford Street. Okay. If they just even um, Google International Books uh, or find them on Facebook, they can like their Facebook page and they can order it online as wow. well. So, um, yeah, I think Jean-Pierre, a man of many, many talents. I really do, I do. I will go back and still read more of the book. Emma, thank you very much for coming on the show. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. So viewers at home, stay tuned for more of this as we have a special guest coming up on the show later on. So we'll be right back after this. Thank you.